Okay, so welcome back to part two of extreme values of function. And in this part, we're going to use the, um, determine what the mean value theorem is and the and Rolle's theorem. Mean value theorem is very important in calculus. Um, you will definitely see this on your test, and you will definitely see it on the AP exam. So basically, the mean value theorems for derivatives is this. It says that somewhere on the interval, the if the, first of all, the function has to be both continuous and differentiable over AB, where AB is an open interval. And there, if that is true, then someplace the derivative has to equal to the average rate of change. So if the function is continuous and differentiable over an open interval, then someplace on that open interval, the derivative is equal to the average rate of change. So basically what it's saying, let's say for instance you drive from your house to Charlotte and your average rate of change is 50 miles per hour. What the mean value theorem guarantees is that someplace your speedometer had to hit 50 miles per hour. So if your average rate of change is equal to 50 miles per hour, then your speedometer, your instantaneous rate of change had to be 50 miles per hour at some point. The goal of the mean value theorem is to find that point. So graphically, it looks like this. We have the average rate of change, which is the slope of the secant line. And we're saying someplace on this interval, there has to be a tangent parallel to that slope of the secant line. OK, so let's do an example. So the first thing that we need to find is the derivative. So we're going to find the derivative of this function. And to find the derivative, we're going to use quotient rule. And so the derivative of this function is negative 1 over x squared. Then we have to find the average rate of change from 1 half to 2. So we're going to do f of b mi minus f of a over b minus c. And what we're trying to find is that point on the on the curve where the derivative is equal to the average rate of change. So we have to set the derivative negative 1 over x squared. In this case, we're using c just to find the value of c. So we're going to take negative 1 over c squared and set it equal to negative 1. So we get that c is equal to plus or minus 1. So notice that negative 1 is outside of the interval. So the mean value theorem for this would be c equals 1. OK? So I'm going to give you a minute to try the next problem. The first thing you have to do is find the derivative. Then take the derivative and set it equal to the average rate of change. And then find that value of c. Pause the video, and then you'll come back, and I'll show you the answer. Okay, so there's the answer. The average rate of change was zero, and we found the derivative, set the derivative equal to the average rate of change of zero, and then we use um, trig to solve for cosine x. And the reason we discarded 5 pi over 3 and pi is because it's outside the interval. Notice that the interval was from zero to pi, but we can't use either of those numbers because it has to be over an open interval, not a closed interval. Rowe's theorem says this, if a function is continuous and differentiable and there is a place where f of a is equal to f of b, then there is at least one number such that the derivative is zero. Graphically, it looks like this. So we have f of a is this point and f of b, and these two are equivalent. So there has to be some place on that curve where the derivative is zero. And we see it in this particular case, that point is here. So how do we find this? The, this is an example. I think this is the second example in your notes. So the first thing we have to do is find the derivative of this. So we're going to use quotient rule, which gives us low times the derivative of the high. minus high times the derivative of the low 
all over low squared. Now, I actually should not have taken the derivative first. In order to prove Rho's theorem, the first thing I have to prove is that f of negative 3 is equal to f of 5. That's actually the first thing I should do, because if this is not true, then it, Rho's theorem won't apply anyway. So f of negative 3, in this case, if I were just to uh, if I substitute negative 3 into here, I get 0, and f of 5 is also 0. So it is true that f of negative 3 is equal to f of 5. Okay? The other thing that I need to prove is that it's continuous on this interval. So the only place where this function is discontinuous is at 6, at negative 6, no, 6. It's discontinuous at 6, which is outside this interval. So from the interval negative 3 to 5, this function is continuous. And f of negative 3, f of a is equal to f of b. So therefore, Rho's theorem applies. Okay? So after proving all of that, I should have taken the derivative. And simplifying this derivative, I get um, negative x squared plus 12x minus 27 is equal to negative x plus 6 squared. Factoring this and setting this equal to 0, because if f of, a, f of a is equal to f of b, somewhere on here this has to equal to 0. And solving this equation, I think I can factor out a negative. I get x uh, squared minus 12x plus 27, which gives me negative x minus 9, x minus 3, all over negative I'm going to factor out that negative as well, x minus 6. Oh, I can't do that because it is, um, so yeah, I can't do that. So this still is negative quantity squared, and that's a plus. Okay, but it doesn't matter because if I set this equal to 0, I'm only concerned about the numerator, so I get x equals 9, x equals 3. And that negative is not there. I don't know what that is. I think that's just a stray mark. Okay, so that would be my answer. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to try the next problem. Uh, if you will pause the video and then come back and look at the answers, I've already have them here. Okay, so that's it for mean value theorem and for Rolle's theorem. So we want to remember that critical numbers occur when the derivative is zero or undefined. We learned that in the last video. We want to remember that local max and, all, and local mins will always occur at a, at a critical point, but not all critical points are max and mins. To find the absolute max and mins, remember to check your endpoints. And the mean value theorem states if a function is continuous on the interval, there is a value where the derivative is equal to the average rate of change. Rho's theorem also has to be continuous and differentiable. Then f of a has to equal to f of b on the interval. And f of a is equal to f of b, then there's some place where the derivative is zero. Okay? So um, I don't have any work for you to do on that. I think if you would just practice what's in your um, packet. And I will see you later.